Hi everyone. Today I have with me problem 3.63 from Young and Friedman's University Physics textbook. So let's get started. This problem is called Leaping, a Clock, Leaping the River 2. A physics professor did daredevil stunts in his spare time. His last stunt was an attempt to jump across a river on a motorcycle. Figure P3.63. The takeoff ramp was inclined at 53 degrees the river was at 40 meters wide and the far bank was 15 meters lower than the top of the ramp. The river itself was 100 meters below the ramp. Ignore air resistance. A, what should his speed have been at the top of the ramp to have just made it to the edge of the far bank? B, if his speed was only half the value found in part one, part A, where did he land? Okay, so it looks like we don't even need to draw a diagram for this question because we have one on the side. So let's go through it. We said over here that we have 53 degrees. It's inclined at 53 degrees. The river is 40 meters wide, 100 meters. Um, this professor, yeah, he's 100 meters above the water and then 15 meters below the height the utmost point of the cliff or this takeoff ramp um 50 meters below that is where he wants to land so right over here all right so what we can start by what we can start doing is we can write down all of our knowns so we know that because this is a two-dimensional problem we have knowns in the x and we have knowns in the y so let's write that down so in the x direction, we have, or let me just, yeah, let me do x direction. We have our vix, we have our dx, and then we have our t. Those are the three things that are important, right? And we don't have any acceleration in this um, direction because remember, we only have gravity that's working on this professor and his motorcycle. And so this is just going to be simple. Um, B, uh, uh, speed is equal to distance over time or velocity is equal to um, displacement over time. So it's just our simple speed equation. Um, so what we know from this question is that it's going to be some initial speed because we're not really given that speed. And then cos 53, right? So if this is vi, then I'm going to change colors, blue. So we know that this is going to be the speed in the x direction. So this is going to be vix. And then this is going to be viy. And I guess right now it's also important to set our coordinate system. So we can go ahead and say that this is positive x. And then this is positive y. So it's positive x. And then if it's going to be in this one, it's going to be negative. And it's going to, if it's going to be below the positive y direction, then it's going to be minus y. OK, so we know that it's going to be um, this this right over here is going to be vix, which is vi cos 53, right? And then dx is going to be 40, like we said in the question. And then time, we have no idea what that is. So we're just going to leave that as an unknown right now. In the y direction, we have, we also have some knowns and unknowns. So in the y direction, we actually have acceleration. So that kind of changes. We're not just going to have a simple speed equation. We're actually going to have one of the five kinematic equations. But let's write down all of our knowns, and then we'll figure out which equation it is from there. So viy, we have that. And similarly, we have viy right over here. We don't know what the initial speed or velocity is. So we're going to, we know the direction, but we don't know the magnitude. So we, we're just going to write vi and then sine 53 for the y direction. And then dx, we are going to have minus 15, right? Because we want to land right over here, right? We don't want to land in the water, so it's not going to be minus 100, it's going to be minus 15 because we're only going from this top point all the way down to the cliff. So that's minus 15. So you have minus 15 meters, and I guess I can just write units right over here. Um, meters, 
And then we're gonna have we're gonna have something seconds, but we're not gonna write that down. And then acceleration, we have negative nine point eight meters per second squared because um, that's what it, it is on Earth, and there's nothing that indicates that this is on any other planet. So we're just gonna assume gravity on Earth. That's the gonna that's gonna be the acceleration. And then again, we don't know what time is. So what we can do is notice right over here how we have two unknowns. Right, so we have two unknowns. Oh, that's not very big. I'm gonna highlight that a little bit better. So yeah, we have two unknowns. We have this right over here, and then we have time. That's also our unknown. So V, I, and T. So looking at this, we can. We've done this before in other practice problems. If you take a look at those, um, we've done this where we have two. We can generate two equations, and we have two unknowns. So let's do that. Because we said we did say that we did say that for the x direction we can generate a speed equation, right? So we have some sort of um, speed is equal to distance, or I'm just going to change the font again. So, or yeah, speed is equal to distance over time, right? And then because yeah, we can also write it this way. We can also write it as T is equal to um, dx over vix. So we can write it any other any way, but for now we can just, it doesn't really matter. But yeah. Okay. So we have vix dx over t. And then over here, we said that because there's acceleration, we're going to have one of the five kinematic equations, right? So because which one, because we have v, because we have initial, uh, velocity or yeah, initial speed or velocity. And um, in this case, it's just because we just have the magnitude, it's going to be speed. So initial speed, we have distance, we have acceleration, and we have time. So we can go ahead and we can write, we can use this equation right over here. So we can do dy is equal to vi y t plus half of a t squared. That's the equation that's going to match. Um, our situation with all the knowns and unknowns that we have or and or want. Okay. So for VIX, what we can do is now we can plug in all the values that we know. So we know that we have VI cos 53 is equal to 40 over T. And then we have over here, we have DY, which is or sorry, yeah, dy, that's correction right over there. So dy is going to be minus 15 is equal to vi sine 53 t plus half of minus 9.8 t squared. Okay. So now we can see that we have two equations. So we have equation one and we have equation two. So two equations and two unknowns. So we can solve this using substitution, elimination. You can plug this into an online calculator. So however you wanna solve it. So I personally, in this situation, what I recommend and personally like doing is substitution. So that's my preferred method. Um, so I'm just gonna write that down, substitution. And in substitution, what we're going to do is we can isolate for T, right? So we can isolate for T, and then we can plug it into these T's right over here. So let's do that. Um, so T is equal to VI, oh, sorry, 40. Is equal to 40 over vi cos 53. So that's what we have. And then here we can just plug that in. So I'm going to plug three into two. So when I do that, I get minus 15 is equal to vi sine 53, 40, over vi cos 53 plus half minus 9.8 40 over vi cos 53 squared 
Okay. So now we can notice that we can actually cancel out this VI. And that's why I prefer substitution in this, these types of questions, because we can just cancel out VI. We get sine 53 over cos 53. So sine over cosine, that's tangent. And then all we're really left with is this VI squared, right? Or one over VI squared. So I'm just going to rewrite that for um, just better understanding in case that sounds kind of hand wavy. So tan 53 times 40 minus 4.9. I just multiplied out this half by this minus 9.8. And then we get this 4417.68. I also just did 40 um, divided by 40 squared divided by cos 53 squared, right? So I just, I multiplied that or I, multiply, I raised it to the power of two and then I divided. And then I just have one over VI squared. All right, so, so when I isolate for VI, so you can just plug this into your calculator, you can um, just isolate for VI squared, and the value that I get, so I'm just going to, so what I get is VI is equal to 17.83 meters per second. So that's the value that I get. And then for T, what I can do, or what I like to do, is I just take this VI and I plug it into equation one, right? So plug VI into equation one. And then what you get is T is equal to 3.277 seconds. So these, this is, these are the numbers that I get. And yeah, there we have it. That's our answer for part A. So his speech, um, his speed, what should have, what, sorry, what should his speed have been at the top of the ramp to have just made it to the edge of the far bank? It should have been 17.83 meters per second. That's what speed should have been. And then we know that um, it's at a direction of 53 above the horizontal. Okay, so now I'm just going to erase this so that we can go ahead and get started on part B. Okay, so I'm just going to write this all down over here. So we said T is equal to, I'm gonna write that this down in red so that we know this is what we solved for. So T is equal to 3.277 seconds. And then we can just, I'm just gonna make a note right over here. VI is equal to 17.83 meters per second. And again, I'm just gonna go ahead and erase all of this. Okay, so now for part B, if his speed was only half the value found in part A, where did he land? So B, oh, okay, that was kind of, maybe I need to, there we go. Okay, so if his speed was only half the value part found in part A, where did he land? So we're just going to say VI, B, so the speed is going to be VI, over two, which is equal to 8.9156 meters per second. And we know that if we want to know where he landed, that's just going to be the x direction, right? So we're gonna plug that into our x equation. So D is going to be VI cos 53 times time. But remember that this is not going to be the same time as in part A, right? Because in part A, we had a different starting speed, which meant that um, the time it took to uh, to um, accelerate due to gravity or 
deaccelerate depending on what you're thinking, right? Um, what your frame of reference is. So the time it took to accelerate due to gravity um, downwards is going to be a different time depending on what the starting speed is. So now we need to find out how long this person, person has been in the air if we want to find out what the distance they traveled was, right? And so we can do that by using our um, our equation for y, right? So where we said the distance they traveled, right? We know that they're going to land in the water, right? That's that's one given because when they, if we want them to land literally at this edge, we said that their starting speed has to be 17.83, which means that if their starting speed is any less, they're literally going to land in the water. They're going to land somewhere right over here. They're going to land, um, they're going to go downwards one. Um, like minus 100 meters. So that's going to be our equation, right? So we said that it's going to be dy is equal to vi y t plus half of a t squared. But dy in this case is going to be minus 100. And then it's going to be minus 100. And then vi y, we don't know what that is, right? But we know that it's going to be. Um, Oh, sorry, we know what VI, Y is going to be. We said that right over here. So it's going to be 8.9156 sine 53 T minus 4.9 T squared. So now all we need to do is solve for T. So when I solve for T, I get two values. I get minus 3.84849 or I get 5.30215. Since we can't have a negative time, it's going to be this. It's going to be this one right over here, and um, I just plug mine into a online calculator for quadratics. But to find the roots, you can also not the roots. Sorry, to solve for t, you can also just use the quadratic equation, or you can also use an online calculator. So when I plug in, so that's going to be how long it takes to. That's how long he's going to be in the air if his starting speed is. 8.9156. And then he's going to land 100 meters downwards into the water. But how far did he travel in the x direction? That's what we're looking for. So what we can do is we can take this t and we can plug it back into this equation. So it's going to be d is equal to vi, which is 8.9156 cos 53 times t. And the distance that I get is 28.4 meters. And that's our solution for part B. If his speed was only half the value found in, found in part A, then he lands 28.4 meters um, from his starting point. And there we have it. That's the solution for problem 3.63. If this was helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, as always, feel free to send me an email or leave them in the comments. Um, and if this was helpful, share with your friends as well, please. Thank you so much and see you next time. Bye.